All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we have Messi here. It's good to have me join you. <laughs> All right, as always, we'll start out with our top trend in what's, uh, you know, trending on the mouths and the lips of everyone across uh, several spaces, social media. And, of course, uh, hashtag justice for Sylvester is still in the news uh, with the family, you know, uh, hiring a senior advocate of Nigeria to ensure justice. That's uh, Femi Falano. Mercy, uh, the, that particular incident is still uh, generating uh, reactions. And the Femi Falano is a renowned lawyer and that uh, he has been hired by the Oromonis to ensure that that, uh, you know, this uh, matter is not just uh, swept under the carpet and that this family actually gets to get all the justice that they deserve. Yeah, uh, Femi Falanor, is, like you have rightly mentioned, is a renowned uh, legal practitioner. And of course, we also anticipate that he has uh, what it takes to actually, uh, you know, get justice and win the case because, uh, you know, the confession of justice, I mean, before his death, in law, it's been called um, declaration. And so that piece of information, the fact that at the point of him dying, it's not possible to have a 24-year-old, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, you know, 12-year-old um, being coerced at the point of death. So yes, that piece of evidence, uh, you know, and at the time of that evidence is enough. So I think that, you know, uh, the chances of getting justice is quite strong with the kind of lawyer uh, that the family has actually hired. But we're also expecting that every other element in this situation would actually cooperate uh, because it's the cooperation that you actually need. There'll be arguments of whether or not, I mean, we've heard of cases, uh, I, I saw a different report on an angle to a fact that it could be, you know, um, an ailment and health ailment and all of that uh, that reacted. But if you look at every piece of all of this, uh, you will find out that, of course, um, there is actually hope. And all that Nigerians are asking, all that everyone's asking is for justice. Mm -hmm. And I hope that this would actually serve as a deterrent to, you know, schools and every other person out there who have been engaging in such practice and getting away with it. Because we know that this is not the first. I mean, of course, you actually saw, uh, you, you heard the video or the audio, the conversation. It was a Zoom conversation where one of the mothers was attacking uh, the ex counselor of the school who said that the kids were not properly monitored. I mean, how do you, you remember also yesterday where we had um, James Sibor on the show and he talked about the fact that it's not, it's not um, normal in no circumstance should you leave uh, kids in a confined space without an adult, you know, to monitor and ensure mm. uh, to, to be around, to see okay. what's going on. I mean, let's even bring it back to our typical homes. You will not have a kid and abandon your child. Right. So for after, if you, if you stay in the house and then you have children, you know when they go quiet at the time, you want to find out what's going on. And that's why you always have an adult. You always have someone around the kids. And that's because they are children. And according to the Constitution, of course, the laws will say that up until they get to the age of 18. And the reason why we are guardians and parents at this point is because they are children. And so it is, uh, you know, the responsibility of the caretakers, you know, the guardians and what have you to protect and ensure that um, they make decisions for them up until the age. I mean, age, age 18 is actually believed that that's the age, you know, that um, they can yeah, make that, decisions can for decisions themselves. For it's really, really quite um, yeah, saddening and uh, very, very unfortunate. Yeah. But like I said, um, that's a good lawyer there. And right. with all of the evidence and with the way the case is, uh, the stand high chance. I mean, if you want to talk about some other conspiracy theories where we have um, rumors saying uh, these persons who were mentioned, the kids who were mentioned have actually left the country. The truth is, if we want an arrest of the suspected children or kids, however you want to put it, um, it's possible within a few seconds right. they will be made available. So another element to all of this is do we have, um, you know, the political, I mean, is there the will, will of state? Because the state also have a role to play in all of this, uh, cooperation and all of that to actually get justice. So right. with all of that, we're hoping that, you know, justice will be met. Yeah, we are hoping that. And just um, yesterday as well, um, the family of um, the uh, Romanese, uh, you know, addressed um, the press. Uh, we have clips of that. Plus, uh, you know, also trending, uh, we saw... Uh, you know, the, the family and of course our next teacher of Darwin that they had some sort of a Zoom meeting. Let's see if we can uh, take those clips now. Five of them walked into the room and as soon as they entered, they saw them coming into the room. One went back and put up the light. 
put out the light. So they moved straight to his bed and all of them started beating him. He, 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 he ran down from his bed, came down from his bed, they beat him, started mashing him like somebody who is step on him, boot him. In fact, anyhow, this small boy. All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Lost TV. Okay, you just watched the, the clip there. That's on the lead that Sylvester's uh, father, you know, addressing the press and uh, talking about um, what should be done and uh, just then, uh, just talking about um, how, you know, sad the family is right now because of all that has happened, you know, with the death of um, their son. Also trending, uh, Aso is in the news um, yet again. Uh, they uh, issued, um, uh, gave an ultimatum to the federal government, and indeed that ultimatum, Mercy, has since, uh, you know, expired. And uh, most uh, students are actually waiting with bated breath. Uh, you know what happened uh, with Lasso last year, and uh, how the schools were shut down for months on end, and uh, academic, uh, you know, uh, activities were not, you know, ongoing, and then the students were just all at home. So right now, we don't even know what to expect. In as much as the, uh, the academic staff union of universities, uh, they've come out to say that uh, uh, they'll be making a decision very soon. Mm. We, we can't say we don't know what to expect, of course. <laughs> Asu is also saying that the public will actually hear from them within 24 hours. So fingers are crossed. And you know what will be, you know, what we will follow. We can't afford another strike, Mercy. Why are you saying we can't afford another strike? We always afford another strike. <laughs> uh, we have always, we have the capacity to afford another strike. And this is something that's been ongoing. Even, you, I mean, I can trace back that to, uh, trace it back to when I was still, you know, in the university. We all experience a strike. I'm sure that as a student, especially if you're schooled in Nigeria, you will also talk about the fact that you witnessed a strike. Mm. But it's totally, um, this, I don't know how to put it. So maybe I'm looking for a very nice word to put it together. The but fact that government will get to an messy. agreement with workers. Messy. Because over time, let's also look at the strike action. Strike action, like I will always say, just as protest. It's also another way of protesting and uh, trying to get the employers to enforce or to ensure compliance with the bargaining, uh, collective the bargaining and the laws. The time, yes. And you know what happens with, you know, capital and labor at the end of the day. So you have a lot of organizers. And so this is something that's been ongoing for a very long time. So strike action is not new. I know a lot of people would always say, why is us always going on strike? But on the other hand, there are different facts. You need to also understand that this is also a means, it's a tool that has been used over time. And for especially countries that do not respect, you know, the collective bargaining, Mm. And so because workers also have their rights and you have the state and we we'll constantly say that you have the issue of, you know, um, you, you, you have the state and the people getting into a social contract. So it is really disrespectful. It's an issue of integrity. And we we'll constantly talk about the fact that you get into an agreement with uh, the state gets into an agreement with workers and they abandon it. So you say you're good because what they're asking for is an implementation of the memorandum of um, uh, understanding, if I'm not mistaken, one of those agreements and some outstanding issues. And you would this, be this also shocked that these issues can be traced back to 2009. Mm. I mean, 2009 is quite That's some time. Years. Mercy. So we're still talking about this issue. So why don't we have a government that is responsible? It is irresponsible. And this is a part of the issues that we talk about. This is a part of the issues that we say it is not, it is not fair. And that's why constantly um, you have the fact that the people no longer trust the government. Yeah. So I am really tired. Since I was born, and I'm getting very old. Asu is still embarking <laughs> on strike. <laughs> government is not respecting it, you know, no, all of this not. agreement. And, and that's what it is. Really very and on sad. the other hand, or very, very you know, sad. on the other hand as well, you also want to begin to question the leadership of Asu and some of these unions. What do they really do? I always ask myself. You remember, um, not long ago, we had the. Um, Railway workers and back in on that strike, yes, and you know, yes. it was called off. And constantly, my question is, what will be the next course of action? The if promises government the does promises not live up to your expectations, and so we feel like if you want to go on strike, let's go on strike. Maybe we go on strike that will last for 12 years, maybe we'll go on strike until we get our demands. Because I really do not know when this um, representative actually meet with the state, I don't know what they always what is always that issue that they get at what they always talk about on the table that would make them call off the strike and so constantly because really, government will know that they will always call off the strike you call them to the table and maybe push a piece of um, you know a pie or meat or something and then they accept of course uh, what is always the reason why do we always because if we want to embark, let's embark 
So if, if we're still having issues from 2009, why are we, you know, we went back in the strike and also tell that the federal government and is not serious in fault. meeting with the demand and they don't take education seriously in Nigeria. So it, is, which is, it still brings us back, I mean, it still brings us back to the same conversation of saying that, yes, government will, it is irresponsible that you will enter into an agreement with, you know, labor and the people, you the citizens, there's no transparency. And then you neglect and abandon uh, the agreement. Agreement, they always say, is an agreement. It's, it's, you know, you have actually come to a table to say, okay, I will do X, Y, Z, and I will do X, Y, Z. So what happens to the implementation? So these are some of the issues that we're still foot dragging about. And I totally find this very embarrassing. And of course, Asa would embark on another strike. And after a while, you could predict, you can tell what would happen. The government will push that piece of pie, and they'll come back again. So we continue in the circle. We'll constantly go in that circle until we decide to take a different action. All right. Uh, the issue of um, us is one that has actually been on for years. Uh, it has dated back more than even 20 years, for as much as I can remember. Even before I got into the university, you know, there has been talk of um, us going on strike. Demands will be made. Federal government will make promises. At the end of the day, uh, the promises will be reneged on, and we are back at uh, square one. We'll leave uh, us for a bit and talk about security now. And the, the, the president, Mohammed Buhari, yesterday gave a charge to you know his security chiefs asking them to do more on intelligence gathering and of course uh, they should uh, work uh, you know better in harmony you know in synergy that's the word he used uh, with all the you know uh, sister security agencies I don't know if uh, 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 we have that particular track uh, the president uh, will see who can call for it in you know in a bit you know mercy it is it is really something Every other time, the president is given, should he even be reminding you know the security chiefs for, uh, that they should you know do better when it comes to intelligence and of course uh, information. You know this is what they should. You know, the president should not be reminding them of how they should go about uh, you know ensuring that uh, this issue of uh, war against insurgency is actually stamped out completely uh, from Nigeria. You know of course he shouldn't even also remind them that they should work you know have a harmonious relationship with sister agencies. It is what they should ordinarily. No. So, first of all, for, I like to tell myself the truth. Um, the fact that we can never have um, peace, of course, peace. We can never get to a point where there's going to be absolute peace and security and everything is going to be perfect. You're not going to have crime and criminality, kidnapping and what have you. But we're saying let's get to a point where it's reduced to the barest minimum. That's exactly what we're asking. I remember a time where the push for change of service of chief was being called. Nigerians were calling everybody. Of course, we needed to change service chief. We needed to understand what the tact is. I mean, if you have this person calling the shots and it wasn't working, then we need to also find that maybe um, they're out of ideas and then let's get fresh. But that's not the only issue. Yeah. As much as we I, at the time, agreed that, yes, there was need for us to change service chief. I also, also felt that uh, changing service chief is not only the major concern or the challenge, uh, you know, in combating or the fight against insurgents in Nigeria. Just as we had Dennis Amakri yesterday, I mean, you had some of the concerns that he raised. The issue of corruption is a big issue. And if we're not able to put our foots down, it's not like we don't understand this. Because over time, I ask myself that question. Is it that we don't understand what's going on? Is it that we're just, we don't know what's going on? Is it that we have no idea on how to address the security concerns? We do have the idea, but yeah. it boils down to a lot of issues. And it's like saying you constantly have an information. If you have an information and you're not acting on it, there are different issues. So the issue of corruption is a major concern. It's okay to say, yes, you're giving them all of the charges, but what happens with corruption? And because we're not making people escape, go, people are not paying, people are getting away with stuff. You also have the issue of sentiment. How many times have you heard people saying that the body language of Mr. President is not even speaking very well because it feels like he's actually uh, you know, taking sides with his kingsmen. Why haven't we had persons arrested? We say we have identified those who are sponsoring uh, these insurgents in the country. Why haven't you had, you know, the entire system working? And right. so you also begin to talk about, so these are some of the con concerns. And apart from that, you also want to not talk about because um, the issues are encompassing. So in the Northeast, you also have the issue of uh, the, the, the IPOP. And you want to look at the challenge. What is the root cause? Because you would, before you actually have a result or you address an issue, it's always important to understand what is the what problem. Exactly is the so cause. the problems are quite different in different parts of the country. Yeah. So in the northeast part of the country, you understand what the challenge is security-wise. You come to this other part, you understand. And majorly, the, the fact that we have a population that is growing and not productive, 
because population can be a strength and a, you know, disadvantage as well. According to the data that was released by the United Nations sometime this year, over 211 persons right, that we have in Nigeria. I mean, what is the productive energy? So you, you want to look at the state, I mean, the, well, uh, the issue of unemployment, how many persons yeah. are very productive. Agreed. So all of these issues are really That's encompassing. But is it that the government is not aware? And we cannot blame anyone. You can't blame me no, you because can't. I'm not the government. No, the Absolutely. government has a responsibility of providing direction and, you know, throw policies. That's and so constantly we see that the, country. the policies, and uh, I, I don't know how to, you know, tag them. But the snow, we're not, we're not, I don't want to say we don't understand. We understand, we're but not we're not willing to address the, things the that issue. We should be doing. Yes. Okay, right, fine. Let's um, take, uh, before, as we round off on this particular discourse, uh, let's take um, the president's uh, charge yesterday, you know, to the service chiefs, and we'll come back and um, wrap up this um, whole uh, discussion. To know that your forum has been working towards promoting peaceful coexistence within the continent in so many ways. On this note, I would like to reiterate the commitment of our government to the resolutions of this assembly, and I invite other African leaders to do the same. I also call on stakeholders to support your efforts towards realizing the core objective of building a peaceful society. I congratulate the Nigerian First Lady for acquiring a piece of land on behalf of all First Ladies for the development of a secretariat. All right, that's as much as we can take on, um, you know, top trend. And the president there charging, you know, service chiefs on um, how they should go about um, intelligence and, of course, uh, working uh, better with um, sister agencies. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll be going straight to Off the Press. And we have uh, Chris uh, Wonder joining us. He's, chartered, he's a chartered mediator and uh, conciliator in a moment. Uh, don't go away. <laughs>